time I told my father, I am gonna someday own a 4K mini computer. And he said, Steve, it'll cost as much as a house. There was a point in time when Apple took the direction to make easy to use computers for anyone. And it was the mouse-based computer technology that we developed for our Lisa and Macintosh computers. I was at a company a couple of years ago that the engineers did discover how to make a brain. And it takes nine months. Hello, I'm honored to be here. I grew up with two purposes in my life. First, I cared about helping people enjoy life. Second, I decided at an early age that I wanted to be an engineer because engineers built new products that made life easier. We had appliances in the home, like washing machines, and we didn't have to wash like the old days. And I felt that the average person in the average home, their life was the life that I wanted to help and make better in my life. I decided I wanted to be an engineer like my father. And I learned at an early age how to design radios and things like that, the old analog electronics. And second, I wanted to be a school teacher, which eventually I did because it was in my heart. Now, there were no computers available to people back then. They were in far off places like the military and research. You'd never touch a computer in your life. You would never find out what they were, how they worked inside. But I was good at math and science and I wanted to know these things. I was shy in school, a social outsider. And I wasn't like most people. I stumbled on, by accident, descriptions of the insides of computers, how they worked. And I said, oh my gosh, I love this stuff. By the end of high school, I got some manuals described the inside makeup of computers, the architecture. I went back to science fair projects where I took little building blocks called logic that could make things that would be sort of smart. Add numbers, play games. And I sat down with pencil and paper and worked and worked and worked to design a computer out of my own head. I had no instruction, no teachers, no books. There were no books about computers sold in bookstores back then came a time I told my father, I am going to someday own a 4K mini computer. And he said, Steve, it'll cost as much as a house. Oh, so I said, I'll live in an apartment. Someday in my life, I was going to own my own computer. 
because a computer would give me more power. It would let me solve problems of my own. I would be more a master of my own fate. Computers did salaries, inventory, sales figures, taxes. Who, who needed that for their home? But games, games were going to be the draw to getting people to start to buy computers to play games like they never had been before. That was a human step. Eventually, took a while before the other PCs, not from Apple, even had color, before they even solved the problem. And they didn't solve it in a very human way. The first PCs had sharp, well-defined colors, whereas we had a range of colors that were soft, some darker, some lighter. They intermixed well, more like a human world. Eventually, personal computers would get better and better resolution because that's more like humans see the world. Do we want cartoons or do we want things to look like television in real life? They got more like real life. Every single stage of development, the display technology got more human. There was a point in time when Apple took the direction to make easy to use computers for anyone, not just for the computer experts. And it was the mouse-based computer technology that we developed for our Lisa and Macintosh computers. You didn't have to memorize a set of commands to type in to just make files move into a new folder. You could just do it visually in front of yourself. It was a humanization. And we said, we've got the easy to use computers. A computer can do things very fast, but it can't think the way a human does. Now, eventually Apple came out with a tablet called the Newton Message Pad. And you could handwrite with your human muscles. You could handwrite instructions, words, and it knew what the words were. Eventually, Siri came along before Apple had it. You'd have a human thought, you would speak it, and you would get answers, questions about the world. What are the five largest lakes in California, for example? Whoa, and it would give you one, two, three, four, five, the way a human would. Apple eventually bought Siri. Artificial intelligence, is it like a human being? Every example in life of machine learning, where machines can learn to do things better or faster than humans, make us think, oh my gosh, it's smarter than a human. It's really thinking. Wait a minute. A machine that's assembling automobiles today, or 200 years ago, a machine that made cheap clothing in Manchester, England, could do things that humans couldn't do. That didn't mean that they were smart and intelligent. Singularity proposes that eventually the machines will instruct themselves and go through, through a singularity and you can't tell what's beyond it. They will be able to program themselves better than we do. It might be that at a point of singularity, we can build machines that process as much information as the human brain, but we do not know how the brain is configured. Look around you. Every time you need maybe support, customer support, and you have to deal with either computer bots or phone chains that are coming from a computer, you can't get your problem solved. You need a human, and a human can solve it. I believe in the artificial, but not the intelligence. It is not at all like a human brain. We do not know how the brain is wired or configured or we could make a brain. I was at a company a couple of years ago that the engineers did discover how to make a brain. And it takes nine months. Okay, thank you all for this much.